What it is, y'all? It is your old boy Pilk, and I'm coming back at you tonight with more Damachi. Now, today we're going to be talking about Heroic Trial. Uh, we haven't actually talked about this yet, um, and I think this one warrants a really good discussion because normally, uh, when we do run this, I tell you guys here in the exchange to always aim for the assist. But I think in this rare circumstance, if you do not have the Light Harahime, she is one hundred. 100% the unit sh you should be going after. Now, uh, let me explain why. And I'm actually just going to kind of cheese it by going in here. Uh, Light Harahime. Normally we go to the uh, other screen, but I don't feel like doing that at the moment. Light Harahime is a crazy, crazy unit. If you ever plan on building a light team, which I would recommend if you don't have one, uh, the light team is pretty wild. Uh, she is a single target unit, but she'll still work wonderfully on an AoE team, uh, only because of her SA. Now, before I get to that, let's talk about the rest of her skills, okay? Skill 1 is an increase in magic dex and light attack damage 60% for herself, with allies magic dex and light attack damage 30%. So if you have a unit on your team that doesn't have any boost, she'll give them a little bit, but that's not the sweet part, okay? Uh, Cicada Chill, skill 2. Uh, remove strength and agility and uh, magic buffs. So if you're in like Wrecker Buster situation or anything like that, it really doesn't matter what they have. If they have a buff, she's going to remove it. She's absolutely awesome. And she increases single target attack damage 20% on her skill too. Fantastic unit. She runs so many events so well. Skill 3 is actually a really fun one too. Super light magic attack damage. 40% for each self magic buff skill. Now, I've talked about this before, but basically, um, that is a, a, a give or take an 80% uh, boost right there. Because remember, you're going to buff magic on both the adventure side and the assist side. This counts for both of those. It's a pretty good attack. Not end of the world stuff at this juncture in the game, but good stuff nonetheless. And she gives a 20% HP regen. Granted, it's only on that turn, but usually this is the attack you spam. Uh, it does have a high MP cost, but there are ways to kind of mitigate that. And to be honest, you're going to do it just only so often anyway, because then the enemy is going to be dead more or less. Now, her essay is what's really wild. Ultralight magic attack, damage plus 80% per each self magic buff. So literally twice what the other one was with an ultra modifier instead of a uh, super. And allies 40% HP regen and light attack damage 80%. Now... If you consider this in kind of that realm of using her with the OG Harahime, this unit right here, which, yes, you can use both units on the same team. Uh, OG Harahime's SA, if I, she'll come up here, which she doesn't want to right now. There we go. Her SA gives everyone 100% strength and magic. So if you use the two together, that means everybody on that team gets 100% strength, 100% magic, and 80% light. That team becomes deadly dangerous and crazy and i love it so in my opinion if you don't have her maxima broken that is the first bond i would go after without question or doubt it's the rare and probably one of a handful of situations where i'll ever say that in heroic trial so let's go ahead and get in here and talk about this uh, and talk about the team. I didn't really talk about the assists, but the assists are fairly straightforward. In fact, I'll just go ahead and back out here and just talk about the assists real quick. Because I did kind of jump the gun and jump in there. So the team that I built here is pretty straightforward. It is predominantly an AoE team. But we are going to be using more of their single target skills for this uh, to get the job done. It does say you want Dark and Earth. But I'm going to be honest, the Dark team is strong enough to basically take this out just with relative ease. Uh, slot one, no, mis you know, no, we see her just about every team. We're using the light line with the uh, fin unit. That's going to give 33% SA gauge charge on both the adventure and the cis side. Pretty usual stuff. Turn two, she's going to leave and bring in Tione or Tiona. I'm sorry. Oh my God. The comment section is going to go love that one. Bring in Tiona. And uh, now this this is kind of a weird situation. We've been talking about collabs. I am using a collab unit here, but it's because she's kind of the best for the uh, for the uh, event here. But uh, Sword Maiden here is one of the rare ones. We haven't gotten a lot of love for dark teams in 
the game really at this point. But she's still dark resist, uh, minus 15%. I don't think there's too many other dark resists. I don't recollect off the top of my head. But just know you're going to need to use a dark resist. She's really good because she adds a strength and magic debuff along with that. But I'm going to go on a limb and I'm going to say probably most people watching this won't have her. So you may have to come up with some other option there. You could use somebody that reduces uh, strength and magic damage or really something there in that regard. Uh, I don't remember what the Living Dead Bell does. I think he does damage up, but I haven't used him in quite a bit of time. Uh, no, he does Dark Resist. Dark Resist down 10%, so you actually could use him. He's free to play. He would be a splendid option uh, in that regard. Now, that's turn two. Obviously, they're going to leave, and they're going to bring in Haruhime. Now, I kind of went sort of with the memes here, and I used Casino Seer to get 100% SAGH charge. You don't have to do that. If you need more defense, you can put a defensive unit here. You can put an offensive unit here. This is kind of your wild card. You can put whatever you need right here. Now, our main line attackers, obviously, in this case, I'm using Argana, um, but really, you can use any number of really good uh, dark units here. Main reason I'm using Argana is because uh, she does extra actions, uh, but I'll be honest, I often forget to buff those. Though, the one thing she does that's really awesome, physical resist and magic resist, up 30% and guard rate 30%, so she's got a big defensive buff. Now, that's going to help us because these units are going to hit very hard. That said, you could in theory put, like, if you have the Tiona that I'm sacking, if you have her, like, maxed out, you could technically put her on the team because she does a big debuff on top of everything else. We'll talk about that when we get into it. But you do want both of these because I feel like without both the defensive buff and the offensive debuff, you're going to run into some problems. So just make sure that you're planning your teams accordingly like that. Uh, skill 2 with her is kind of her buff, strength 70%. And she does damage received, attack all targets, minus uh, 40%. But that's a, that's a self buff. So it just really only helps her. Eh. Still, the strength 70% is going to help big time. Okay, But mostly we're going to be using her single target because there's only two foes and that's going to kind of be your thing. Now we are going to SA with her and we'll talk about that when we get in there. Uh, I am using Goblin Slayer and once again, same the same realm as uh, Sword Maiden that we were talking about earlier. Um... You, you could get away with just about anybody here that is a good dark unit. Um, I like Goblin Slayer for what he does. Uh, he's going to add a physical resistance debuff here that we don't have on the team. Uh, the dark debuff is kind of overwritten by Tiona. Tiona will do her own dark resistance buff that's 35%. Um, just know that he's kind of here for his physical resistance, and he also has AoE and single target damage debuff, I guess you could say, on the opponent. Because this adds 20% extra damage to either one of those attacks to your opponent. It's very, very, very good. And he does a big single target hit, which includes 40% uh, damage. Uh, let's see. Strength and target. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's 40% strength and dark attack buff. Never mind. I thought that was for, that was like the 40%. No, this is an older meta. So it's a strength and dark attack damage plus 40% that's added on after that. But it still is okay. It's not crazy. It's not the end of the world. But it's okay. Now, a lot of people will probably tell you to SA with him. Um, he's a good one. But personally, the way I run it, I run it a little bit differently. But they're they're going to fall to this team. So it really isn't a huge deal, if I'm honest. But, you know, and like I said, these are variable teams. You can run these different ways. Now, finally, we get a chance to flex Rage Otaro for the first time in a very, very long time. And Rage Otaro is great for this. Now... There's two ways to go about this, and this was actually a debate on the stream tonight. Whether you do skill 2 or skill 1, I like skill 1. Skill 2 has a big self, physical, and magic resistance uh, buff skill, but I find with all the buffs and debuffs that we've already got in play, I don't need it. I'd rather get the extra turn of damage out, but because this 50% attack damage doesn't happen until the end of the turn, eh, it's kind of 6 one half dozen the other. Like You're getting some damage out, but you're getting some defenses. But the analogy I made is like, what good is this if at the end of the turn, Isotaro survived and everybody's laying dead around him? So for me, I just, I like to get the attack damage out and use other units for the 
you know, for defenses. But that's me. We're really just going to spam his single target attack, though, because his single target attack is just fantastic. 40% per each self-strength buff skill. Obviously, we're going to buff him on the assist side and the adventure side. That's going to be 80%. It's pretty nuts. So, let's get in here. Let's do a quick run. All right. So, like I said, turn one, we're going to do our general buff stack. Nothing too inventive, nothing too crazy. Obviously, this is going to include... Oh. Otaro, we got to do skill three. I even talked about that. You could do, like I said, skill two, skill three. I like skill three, personally, because it gets an extra attack out. It, it, it is what it is. Now, like I said, skill turn one, we're not going to do crazy damage. Turn two, I like to target Daphne. I feel like she just falls a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, we're going to go ahead and do the, uh, like I said, this does a, was it, skill two. I was... I was missing. I always do skill one and they get messed up. Skill two does uh, strength and magic down 40%. A lot like Har in fact, exactly like Harahime's Akane skill does. So we kind of override that. But it also does dark resistance down 35%. I love the skill. If you've got her max, which I do not, you could have her on the main line. In fact, even without her max, you could probably put her on the main line. I just found this is where I put her for success rate. So skill two. Let's go ahead and do that attack. We're going to go ahead and do skill two with everybody else, with the exception of Otaro, who's going to do skill one. Literally just going to spam skill one for the rest of the fight. Daphne's targeted. Like I said, I just feel like she falls a little bit faster than Haruhime does. But you'll kind of see my strategy here in a moment. All right. So now that Haruhime is basically all of her skills are out of the way, um, I could drop Sheikah. In fact, I think I will this time. Let's make sure nothing's running out. Um, uh, strength 70% is running out, but I think she's got to rebuff that. Let's see. No, she got two turns. Unaccentuate. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Yosuga on this turn because I don't want that running out. Uh, with Gamble Say, we're going to go do a single target and we're going to continue spamming single target with Otaro. So let's go ahead and do it that way, because I really don't want her strength buff to run out. Uh, the next turn, we will have to buff this, but like that's her strength buff, so it's like I'd have to do it again. I'd just rather do that. Just make life simple. Um, the counters will be really, really good and really critical to our longevity, but you can see like Daphne's falling apart at the seams. But she's just going down. All right. So once again, we do have to rebuff that, so... It is a thing. Those two are going to continue doing their single targets. And this time I'm going to target Haruhime so I could build up a double SA gauge charge. Now I could do Sheikah here to get a little bit more counter damage out. And notice that Haruhime is now falling apart at the seams too. But my goal here is a turn six double SA. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Yosuga for this turn. We'll have some counter rate. Everybody else is doing their big single target. Pretty straightforward stuff. Like, you can already kind of see where I'm going with this. Now, because Otaro and Argana both do uh, an AoE SA, I'm going to double SA with the two of them. Remember, that's going to increase the amount of damage they do. That's going to increase everything in regards. I, you could do Haruhime here, but I kind of feel like doing the double damage is a little bit better. Plus, Argana has a really good debuff on her SA. So it's just going to allow Otaro to do so much more damage. Boom. Boom. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. And they fall. Pretty easy stuff. Like I said, if you've got a decent dark team, they absolutely eviscerate this event. So go ahead, build yourself a good dark team. Um, once again, mine is not like the end all be all of dark teams. How did that not... Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I was just like, I expected that to be the killing blow, but it wasn't. So either way, guys. Dark Team wrecks it. I nicked the mic again. I'm not going to re-record this. You get the idea. Let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Make sure you guys subscribe. We're doing a big subscriber push right now. I'll be back at you guys with more Damachi here really soon. Go get your rewards, y'all.